All right, everybody, welcome. Okay, to this podcast today, the 11th, Happy Veterans Day. All of you have served. Thank you very much for your service. 11-11, that's a lucky number too, right? So uh, today we are very fortunate from the St. Rose office to have Mr. Joe Modi. Joe, if you haven't already done it, hit star six so we can hear you. So unmute your phone. We did that, and happy Veterans Day to all the gals and guys that serve for us. Thank you also. Yes. All right, Joe. Well, let's get – hey, let's get right into it, my man. Tell us a little about yeah. yourself. First first time I've had you. So, like, how long you've been doing this, all that good stuff. All right, cool. Well, it's nice to talk to you outside of the bathroom because every time we see each other, we're walking into the bathroom. <laughs> so. Very true, very true. I only see in the bathroom in the hall. Yeah, cool. I've That's been right. doing this – I just got my 25-year – magnifying glass from the from the association last month so i've been doing nice. this for 25 years holy cow yeah wow. almost as long as you <laughs> yeah i'll be able to say 40 uh uh in january imagine that, Isn't wow. that crazy you don't look that old <laughs> i just turned oh well, actually i'll be 60 next month can you imagine that i can i'm going to be 61 <laughs> so you know the drill, right? Yeah, it gets the time flies, man. Time flies, but you know, you got to keep on swinging, as we say. So you've been and you've been here all twenty five of those too, haven't you? In Las Vegas? Yeah, yeah. I was um, I was an ex hotel guy. I actually opened up the Palace Tower for Caesar's, Caesar's Palace back in the early nineties or late late nineties, basically. And I was there, and believe it or not. My sister was in real estate, and I saw her doing her thing. I'm like, man, I, I'm selling rooms for the hotel. I certainly could sell rooms for for private people. So I right. went and got my license that night, and it worked out perfectly. The month I got my license, my boss and I got into an argument, and I left the hotel business, and I never looked back. Awesome. And you've seen, and, I uh, mean... Be, being in the real estate business since the '90s, I mean, you've seen a lot of things happen here, haven't you? Oh yeah, it's 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 amazing to watch to watch a city grow and then you know go through its ups and downs. And even when it was down, it was still trugging along. I mean, this city—I always call this city our, our Casablanca. It it just keeps on trugging, and if the leaders to be don't screw it up, I think it'll keep on trugging. You know. Yep, I agree. Yeah, it's 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 nice the election's finally behind us, and you know, I mean, now people look like they're getting back. I mean, I can see the activities already picked up. Stock market's doing well, so it's a good thing, and I think we'll continue. And and you know, we've had, we've gone through a couple of years now with the business being down about twenty percent, twenty twenty five percent, based on the Fed now going the other way and the election behind us. It looks like I think we'll have uh, a really good first quarter next year. I'm sure hoping so. This year, I, this was the slowest, I'm going to say, after the first quarter, this year was the slowest year I've seen in my 25 years. Wow. I mean, people it's just weren't were, yeah, were doing it, even from the rental side, because I do property management. People weren't even mm -hmm. looking at rentals. They were, you know, unless someone was really desperate, you know, divorce, death, or they were moving here for a job, no one was doing anything. And even in the 2008-2010 downturn, at least we were doing short sales, right? And then we were or putting people in rentals. It was it's been right. quiet across the board. So hopefully, I've seen a little. T actually, this weekend, when my I have one listing I've been trying to push. I've seen I've got more action on it this weekend. So, like you said, hopefully it's uh, people's mindset are back in the okay. Let's move forward. We know who where we're going and what we're doing. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's funny you say that too, because that's what I've been telling a lot of the agents I coach is that this is kind of a have to market. Like I'm being relocated. We need an extra bedroom. Uh, I, you know, whatever. So, but as the interest rates come down, because we, you know, because Joe, let's face it, we have so many people that, um, you know, have two and a half, three and a half, three, you know, percent interest rates that uh, why would they move? But as those rates yeah. come down, then we will go from, okay, I have to sell to, you know what, I've been really thinking about it for a while now, and the market is more conducive. I think we're heading back into that type of, it won't just be have to sellers very shortly. Yeah, no, no, I like that. Have to sell, I'm going to steal that from your have to. 
Yeah, even from even from like even if you do have, I tell people all the time. You know, like one of your questions you said is what what would you do differently if you got into this young? I would have bought houses. I would have yeah. leveraged myself to the hill and just bought houses. Because if I did this thirty twenty five years ago, I'd be I'd have ten rentals. Even if I make a thousand dollars a house, that's ten grand a month. I could live off ten grand a month very easily. You know, I'm not that <laughs> extravagant. So, you know, that's right. one of the. And I tell my I tell my people, you know, keep your house and rent it. It's a good. It, that's how you build generational wealth. I mean, I'm. But you know, it's a mindset thing. I tell people all the time. The numbers have nothing to do with it. Like we had that economist in the office the other day talking all these numbers, and I'm like, that's all great, but the people are still scared. Until they right. get rid of that fear in their mind mentally, they're not doing nothing. I don't care what the numbers tell us. But very true. You know, yeah, they have to. It, consumer confidence has to come back up. I think it's headed up yeah. too, though. Yeah, so do I. I. I think hopefully we turn the corner and people are going to start jumping on the bandwagon and start doing things. But now we go into a, a, a multiple offer market, which is never fun. Yeah. Well, it, it, but it, but that's the thing too, Joe. Like right now, I think uh, what one of the things I'm telling everybody is, go through your database A to Z, especially if they're buyers. You know, rates are coming down. Like Prosperity Mortgage, the company we work with, you can refinance from the day you close. They give you three years to refinance with no lender fee. That's a pretty good deal. So you can get the house you want, not be in a multiple offer situation, and then just so look at it as a two step process. Buy and then refinance later. I know because, you know, and I have this, I, a lot of times when I'm playing golf, I'll be hooked up with or get paired up with people. And, you know, um, we, it, you know, once they find out you're in real estate, boom. And anybody, anybody who's renting says to me, uh, you know, should I buy? My first question is, can you qualify? Yes. Then yeah. you should buy. Yeah. Well, what about the interest rates? Well, what about you're paying a hundred percent interest rate with no tax deduction, no principal reduction, there's never a situation where renting's better if you can afford to buy, right? Right. And I tell people, people are, exactly, oh, when's a good time to buy? I always tell people, when you're ready to buy, you, right. you know, what's your why? Why are you buying? Are your finances in order? Do you, are you having kids? Are you getting married? Are you getting divorced? Did someone pass away? What's your why? Why are you buying? Is it an investment property? The best time is when you're ready to buy. Don't let them, I always tell people, don't let the market dictate what you do because the market goes up and down. <laughs> true. True, true. The best, yeah. I, people ask me that, and I, I always tell them, the best time to buy was five years ago. But since you can't do that, this is the second best time right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I like that. I'm, I'm going to steal that one from you too, Rick. This has been a good Oh, uh, no problem. So <laughs> yeah, the, um, yeah, I mean – you're absolutely right, though. The younger you are, like I coach people, you know them, I'm not going to name their names, but yeah. I know people that have bought in this office, bought a home, lived in it for two or three years, rented it out, bought it. And now you've got an investment property at owner occupied rates, bought another one, right? Lived in it for two, three, then bought it. And now the, now the, uh, you know, he, he has four rental properties plus his house. Now they eventually say to you, okay, you can't, you know, you know, these are investments. Uh, you get a couple deep and then you eventually get crap doing that, but you can still, you can buy at least two or three, maybe even four that way as a, um, yeah. especially if you're a younger person. I mean, why wouldn't you? It makes perfect sense, especially you're in the business. Yeah. I tell people that all the time, even not in the business. I mean, just hire and then hire a property manager. We're cheap. I mean, literally uh, the most expensive one is 10%. And, and if you budget yourself, right. The only time we call is when we want money. We're like kids. Right. Absolutely. You know, so, yeah, so I what do totally you, agree with this. So what do you see? Like, okay, so you've been doing this for 25 years, doing well. What do you see, uh, you know, like my favorite question, top three things. Give us some of your uh, top. You can give me more if you want to, too. Top three things in order to be a success in this business. What would you say they are? <clears throat> well, the first one is your database. And I, and I I laugh at this all the time because I'm guilty of it as any other agent. I would have my database tuned in so tight, I would know what everybody was doing. I mean, that should be your main – even if you're not in the business, you should keep a tight database because you always want to know people, right? It's who you know in this world, right, if you want to get things done. I would tune in my database so tight and just keep in touch with my sphere. It, I think that's – 
I don't care what anybody says. That's that's your base of of your business. Mm-hmm. Everything else everything else is frosting. Um, <clears throat> is 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 what I call it. Uh, you know, if you're a young agent, I would definitely get a coach like yourself or get on a team where someone can mentor you because. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell people, you could take 10,000 classes, which we have to take, but you don't, it doesn't actually sink in until you make a mistake and you're pulling that money out of your pocket to correct it, or you got a client screaming at you saying you screwed up, or you got a client loving you because you did such a good job. That's, and then you know, know what to do. Then the other thing I always tell people is I'm a process guy. Understand the process. I will tell you, Rick. 95% 95% of the agents don't understand the process. They know how to rattle it off to you, but they don't understand the process of mm. buying a house from, from A to Z, right? So people always tell me, oh, I could look up on the Internet and look find the house myself. Great. That's like one of 1% of what we do as real estate agents. That's really not my job because you have better access sometimes than we do. My job is once you find that house or we find that house, to get you through the process, to get you through the loan process, the appraisal process, the inspection process, dealing with the buyer, dealing with the buyer's agent, getting you through all those steps to escrow, going through the mm. escrow process, right? And the, I mean, those are, I always say it's not a fun process, but it's the best one out there. So I, I think to me, those are the things that I would concentrate on if I was a new agent. Understand the process, get a mentor, and work the shit out of your database. Excuse my French. Um, <laughs> you know, it's okay. You can swear here. You know, those are the things that I think are most important. And, you know, and then, like I said, get a coach or get a mentor. For the first three or four or five years, get a mentor until you, until you go through a few deals and you understand them, you know. Um, and I don't care how old you are when you get in the business. I would still get a mentor and have someone follow, you know, Someone I could follow and yeah. bounce stuff off of. Well, and, and I love your first one, database, because let's face it, here, if you use the VAC and you know how to use the VAC, okay, um, it is a tremendous database and it gives them really good stuff, really good information, neighborhood reports, market reports, newsletters. I mean, if you really yeah. are paying attention and, you know, you can do it for free or as, uh, you know, within your split, you know, um, you know, it's uh, – it's, and and the, the, the sad part is, is not a lot of, I shouldn't say not a lot, not all of our agents uh, actually use the database. And if you do, I mean, it looks like your own slick marketing campaign. Yeah. No, I know. That's what, it, hey, look, I think Berkshire, it, when I had my broker, I had a little brokerage before I came over to Berkshire. But yeah, I, I would tell my agents, give me your database. I will take care of it for you because you won't. Because we don't. Right. I, I'm sorry. Fifty percent of the agents don't. We just don't do it. I, I've always wondered why a brokerage hasn't taken that next step and said, "Listen, it's your database, but we'll take care of it for you, and we'll send we'll set everything up when you sell. We'll we'll take care of that for you. That's one of the services we offer. I think everything else is all again. I think it's all frosting. You help me take care mm-hmm. of my database, man. That that's going to produce for for everybody. But I agree. And then with yeah. that also. With that also, I would say, you know, make sure that you're connected with them on whatever social media sites you're using, because those three things together, talking to them, seeing them digitally, and also uh, on social media, I think is critical yeah. in today's world. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm, we're, we're in that same generation. I'm old fashioned. I mean, I, you know, the internet's here and it's here to stay and you got to use it as a tool, but it's that good old, remember the old, the old, uh, I think it was American Airlines. They, they, sorry, my dog's going nuts. <laughs> no problem. Um, the guy goes, where are you going? He goes, I'm going to shake someone's hand. And he was getting on a plane. You know, pick up the phone. Yeah. We got the phone in our hands. Just pick up the phone and say, don't even talk to anybody about real estate. Hey, Rick, I just came across your number. I was just... How you doing? I haven't talked to you in a while. All right, good job. You know, just and then hang up, just so they have right. you on, on their brain. You know. Yeah. But, you know, no, I, I all agree. That, uh, they're all tools. You got to use them. They're all tools, absolutely. And when you say process, okay, so I understand the appraisal process. 
and, and you know the uh, uh, you know the uh, home inspection, all the other negotiating and things that you've got to do and deal with. But I would also say when you, when you say process, it's also good to understand all the new contracts and forms, everything as well, right? Oh yes, most definitely. That, that that's part of the process, right? And even to the extent yeah. uh, we we didn't get into it, but I did loans for 15 years until they changed the law and made it a little harder to do both. Because during the boom, I worked for a company. I worked for a company. We had a real estate and mortgage company together, and we we did that all day long, and it was great. I mean, cause mm-hmm. we we had control over everything. Um, and I, that's another thing I would tell new agents: go if you don't under, understand the loan process more than anything, because that's really very important. And again, you got to understand the flow of the paperwork, especially with the new contracts coming out. How do you? Everyone got nervous, and I was just I laughed kind of because they're like, "Oh my God!" I was like, "Well, if you weren't explaining this beforehand, it's just a you just got to flip two words around. I don't you don't pay me anymore." You don't pay the the buyer's agent. I don't pay the buyer's agents. You do directly. Okay. And I haven't had any kickback from it yet. People are like, okay, let's, yeah. let's keep on moving. I mean, that yeah, that it, whole it, thing, I, I don't know if we want to get into that, but that whole thing was, what a money grab that was. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it ends up being the same. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of the agents I coach are actually getting paid a little bit more on the buyer side now because you get to write in your amount. You know, before in MLS, you know, they were offering two, two and a half. Now you're getting three on your contract. Sometimes you negotiate it down to two and a half, but you're still getting three or two and a half or before you were getting two and a half or two. So I think it's actually, right. for the for the agents who are paying attention, I think it's actually really good. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's, it's not a big, it's not really a big thing. It's just a matter of, again, if you understand the process and you explain it to people correctly, I don't think people have a problem. So, exactly right. Exactly right. Start buying again. <laughs> right. Well, I think that um, you know, I think that uh, um, it's it's starting. Like you said, the activity's already picked up. Stock market isn't doing really well. Um, you know, I mean, it was doing really well before, but it's like picked up crazy after you know the election. Once the results were in, so that uh, hopefully everything yeah. just keeps going down. And I don't see why it won't, because you know, I, I think it's all. It was all headed in that direction anyway. I think it just might just push it a little further. Now, yeah, mentor, hopefully. all right? So like you said, you I mean, I offer coaching. Anybody in the company can come to my coaching for free. All I have to do is email my assistant, Lisa P, at bhhsnv.com. But also, you can also go to another agent like yourself or whatever and say, hey, I've got a listing appointment. Could you come with me and, you know, and share or pay a referral fee or whatever, you know, because that's just smart because it makes sure it, yeah. you're better off getting the first couple listings by using somebody with experience in your office. Yeah, go join a team. I mean, I know it sucks because you're everyone's, you know, I, from the agent we all complain everyone's reaching into our pocket, but that that knowledge is invaluable. You can't, and if you get a good team or a good agent that will mentor you, then. Um, I mean, you can't put a price on it. It's a college education. Right. And like, and like my father used to tell me, it's not that I'm any smarter than you. I've just been down the road and I know where the potholes are. Right. You're exactly right. And that's the key. That's a huge part of the business. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of, um, you know, there's so many intricacies. You know, people think real estate's super easy. I mean, and there are some transactions that are, but there are a lot where your experience, knowledge, and I would say even business skills uh, are, I, I would say, are underrated as an agent because there's a lot of agents out there that aren't or don't yeah, have that yeah. kind of skill, and you don't know it until you're into a transaction, right? So yeah. I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah, well, that's a good comment. You, some are easy. I think they're, they're easy because you know what you're doing. Not be, you know, yeah. If you leave it up to the – you know you. <laughs> You leave it up to the the gods, so you know something's gonna screw up someplace. I mean, I just right. had a deal cancel. I just had a deal cancel on me, and you know I'm a pretty big stickler when I get an offer. I call the I call the loan officer, and I could tell just by the way when I call him. So how's you know how are we looking? Oh, everything looks good. I mean, no, is it in underwriting? Do we have underwriter approval? Do you have condition approval? Where where are we in the process? 
The reason why they canceled was the father and son were buying it, but the father had a bank statement with the other son. There were two sons, and the two sons didn't get along, so the son that had the name on the bank statement wouldn't sign off on it. Oh, wow. I mean, I mean that that's – I mean, how do you teach somebody that? You, right. you know what I mean? That's something you can't – you got to – unfortunately, you got to experience it, you know, or you got to, you know, acknowledge it, which I was kind of pissed at the loan officer because that's a question – that's something she should have been on top of right from the beginning. If she saw the son's name and the and the father's name on it, you know an underwriter is going to ask for some type of letter. Worst case scenario. Right. right. But absolutely. Anyway, no. that's yeah. just a whole, nature, whole, that's a whole bunch of, of intricacies. Yeah. 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 There's a lot yeah. of hands. There's a lot of hands in the pot, as I say. And, and it sounds to me like the adjustment of, well, first off, let me just say this. Like I said, I've been doing this, it'll be 40 years in a couple months, but, um, and, and buyer agency has been out since like the mid nineties to me, you know, um, cause you know, if you know, you take my training, you know, that I always been, I push the buyer broker agreement, um, you know, from day one, you know, it, to me, it's shocking as an industry, it took us 30 years to go from, yeah, you can use it to, okay, now it's mandatory. But it sounds like you're, you've adjusted <laughs> very well to it. Yeah, I, I, unless, unless they were repeat clients of mine and I had a, an established relationship with them, I always did use it. And I will tell you, my, my teammate, you know, Vito, and I, Vito is on the Modi team, which I have my little Modi team. And Vito I yes. kind of mentored because his office sat across from mine because at the time we were yeah. both on the Tonneson team. And, um, right. So Vito, I used to hear Vito talk all the time. I used to call him in my office. Vito, come here. You're going to get yourself in trouble. So he came back and he goes, can I come with you? I, you know, I really like the way you coach and teach. And I'm like, yeah, go for it. But he's a buyer broker guru, man. He, he won't take any, he took it to heart when I said, don't take anybody in car unless you have a buyer broker's agreement. He gets everyone. He doesn't care. He, everyone signs his buyer broker agreement. I tease him yes. all the time. I go, damn, Vito, you're better than I am at that. <laughs> uh, he's good. He's good at it, yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's another one that's I've seen. Yeah. I've seen him in my success series. As a matter of fact, my success series uh, video, Why Should You Take uh, It? He's actually a star in it. Stands up, does a, does a little script, and then adds his own to it. Because he's done some acting, too, Vito. Yeah, yeah. But actually, just he got a bit role in the new uh, Phantom movie, if you saw the trailer. Uh, Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. Oh, good yeah, for him. No, good got, for him. I he, love it. He's got, he's got the buyer broker thing down. He really does. He really yeah. does have it down. Yeah. Yeah. He, it's just, it's presentation skills. And he's definitely got, he's a, he's like a, uh, what do you call it? Easy, easy, easy to warm up to. Cause he's so, uh, he's professional. He's friendly. And I guarantee you he's practiced it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he's by various, Vito's, you know, he's, I tell him, Tune it down just a little bit, but people love him. He's a great guy, you know. He's he's uh, yeah. He walks in, he's flamboyant. He fits Vegas, you know. So they they really they really latch on to him. And he's a good guy, he you know. That's that's that's, yeah. that, that, yeah. that's the other thing I like to tell you know, new agents: just be yourself. Don't don't try to yeah. be something you're not. I get so many people that come in and they try to. If you don't know the answer. Tell people, geez, I'm sorry, I don't know that answer. Let me let me research it for you, or let me ask my partner, or you know, let me ask someone. And we'll we'll get back to you on it. There's so many people that try to be something they're not. Just be yourself and be true. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think in today's world of social media too, with your videos and all that, be yourself. Because yeah. <laughs> when you try to be somewhere, when you try to be someone else, it it comes across as inauthentic and phony, and you know. Yeah. Um, that's not good. People sense it right away. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. Especially here, because people have their guard up a little bit anyway when they're in this town. So, but yeah, yeah, that's Vegas a, is an interesting, they, they interesting town. Yeah, very, very interesting. But we're becoming more of a. I think we're becoming more of a normal town. <laughs> normal town. That's funny. Um, you know, more. You know, I call it the big little city. You know. We're still a yeah. little city, but we're, we're definitely growing. Yeah, we're definitely growing. To what, uh, almost three million, two point something. Anyway, it's it's crazy. Yeah, when I moved there. here, the 
yeah, I've been here for 15 years now. And, and, uh, you know, it was, um, I, when I first moved here, I called it the fake city because it was really just a strip. But now yeah. with the tax, tax incentives, a lot of companies and people realize we're not just a strip, you know, um, we have a lot of good communities and I think a lot of companies and businesses have moved here. Now we have hockey, you know, baseball soon to come. We've got the, you know, uh, two time world champ aces, um, WNBA. I mean, so we got a lot of, a lot of good stuff yeah. going on here. Yeah. Hopefully the Raiders will get their stuff. Yeah. We're, we're going to, we're going to become a, Oh a, yeah. I forgot the Raiders too. Yeah. We're going to become a sports city. It really, I mean, this, listen, when I first moved here, Wayne, we used to drive past Wayne Newton's house which is on Sunset and Pecos, drive yes. about a mile and, and shoot our guns. There was nothing there. Right. There was that's absolutely funny. nothing there. And, I mean, the DMV yep. on Sahara, that, that's where it ended. Nothing yeah. there. All that's brand new. It's, just, it's really amazing. It's astonishing how the city has grown. It really has. It really is. And a lot of people moving here from all over the place. So that's I why we love California. People- yeah, I think more people are going to move here. I mean, that. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, California is ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. I mean, from a financial standpoint, <laughs> you know, no, you don't want to live yeah. on the. You know, I'm originally from upstate New York, so everyone wants to get out of the cold. No one wants to do the cold right. anymore. And this this place gives you the best of both worlds. Outside of eight That's, weeks in the summer where it's hot, it's actually pretty yeah, good. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm from. Uh, I'm from uh, right outside of Boston, so I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I yeah, every well, time I go back yeah. to Christmas, I'm like, wow, I lived here for so long. Why? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like snow boots. I mean, they don't get the snow they used to, but it still gets cold, and you never know. You can get a snowstorm in two seconds there. One day oh, yeah. it's 80 degrees. One day it's it's 80 below. So, yeah, it's it's I man, that's just a tough quarter of the country up there. Well, people, listen, I have sure. friends that will not leave the neighborhood still. Oh, yeah. I, me too. Me too. Well, my they're, man, I just want to say thank you very much, man. This has been uh, this has been awesome. I'm sure people will get a lot of nuggets out of this. I just want to say, Joe, thank you very much for taking your time out. Really appreciate you, well, my thank man. Thank you. I appreciate All you. Right. Thanks for having me. Uh, we'll see you in the hallway. <laughs> I'll see you in the hallway, yeah. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. We'll do it again next week. And, uh, Joe, thanks for taking your time out today. I really appreciate it. Uh, have, a, have a good day. Bye-bye. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye.